characteristics of these uh, minerals and rock samples uh, which we discussed earlier in our uh, indoor uh, theory uh, uh, lessons and today we are going to look at the samples. Okay, so first we are going to begin with uh, minerals, common rock forming minerals and if you recall from your, uh, from your classroom lessons, the, uh, we looked at a few rock forming, a uh, few uh, mafic minerals and few felsic minerals. So we begin with the mafic ones, uh, dark colored ones. Uh, the ones that we uh, talked about in the class were amphibole, biotite, olivine and plagioclase and the characteristics that uh, basic uh, characteristics of these uh, minerals are uh, listed in the table there. And then we are going to look at uh, a few felsic minerals and these are the felsic minerals and the properties of these minerals are listed in the table there. So we are going to look at uh, these minerals one by one. So let's begin with uh, the mafic minerals. Okay, so here are the common rock forming minerals. We have got uh, seven of them. Actually, we unfortunately couldn't get a sample of uh, olivine here, uh, but all the rest of the uh, eight minerals that we talked about, four uh, uh, mafic and four felsic minerals, uh, they are here. Now, uh, the first one that I want to show here is, a, is an olivine sample. So the dark colored, uh, portions of this particular uh, piece of uh, rock is uh, olivine and we have got another one here you can have a look uh, so uh, this is one of the dark colored mafic mineral mafic mineral is what we are starting with and then the second mineral is the uh, is uh, is basically biotite mica and uh, you can see the mica sheets here Okay, and uh, this, this is a dark colored mica, it's called uh, biotite. So uh, basic, the color of uh, both amphibole and uh, biotite is black as you have uh, seen in the table that we presented earlier to summarize the properties. Uh, then we go to, uh, go to plagioclase. This is, a, this is a sample of plagioclase, you can see uh, you can see that this is basically uh, basically white colored mineral and it has got it has got two perfect sets of cleavage here two perfect sets of cleavage uh, in this uh, particular case uh, which both of them have got a shiny surface now this one we are going to look at the other properties in detail later on as we uh, continue through the uh, whole uh, demonstration. So the, uh, the, the, the felsic minerals, so we begin with quartz and the color of this one really, uh, you just first look at the crystal here, this is a perfect uh, quartz crystal. Uh, so here what we have got uh, basically conchoidal cleavage so the cleavage uh, this is a this is an example of uh, conchoidal perfect example of uh, conchoidal cleavage but the color of uh, this particular thing uh, could vary quite a lot actually you could have typically you should you are going to get uh, white or colorless uh, quartz crystal like this one but on my right hand here is an example of a little bit uh, more uncommon uh, quartz uh, sample. This one is dark colored. Is uh, black quartz. This one. Now we are going to go to muscovite. Uh, this is also another uh, mica, uh, dark color, but this one is a light colored mica. You can see uh, characteristics are quite same. It is both of them are quite flaky. Uh, so this one is on my right hand I'm holding uh, uh, muscovite and uh, the biotite mica that I showed you earlier uh, part of uh, felsic as a part of felsic minerals mineral group uh, that is on my left hand so you can see and you can compare 
uh, how they look right so then uh, let's move on to other uh, minerals we have got uh, we have got orthoclase basically uh, these are the these are some examples of orthoclase and this type of feldspar you can just look at this is the most common perhaps the uh, perhaps the most common color of this particular uh, mineral is this one uh, it looks like uh, looks like uh, meat actually uh, animal flesh in color is very similar to animal flesh uh, and if you if you contrast if you contrast actually this one also has got uh, two sets of uh, cleavage but you should contrast this one with the earlier sample that we showed for another crystal another uh, feldspar plagi the plagioclase feldspar which was which was uh, which is uh, i'm holding on my right hand and you can see the relative angle between the cleavage whereas whereas uh, whereas uh, both of them have perfect two sets of perfect cleavage but the uh, the uh, orthoclase feldspar the the planes the cleavage planes they are inclined at a much slanting angles in comparison with the angle of cleavage that you got that you normally get in, uh, that you get in case of plagioclase Okay, so those are the examples of uh, of uh, uh, of orthoclase, and now finally we are moving on to pyroxene samples. So these are also actually dark colored samples, and these are the examples. These are some of the examples of uh, pyroxene mineral, and you can uh, you can have a look at the cleavages and they are they are black in color actually so so dark colored mineral by by definition is not really uh, mafic uh, so you could see, you you have seen some of the minerals here are dark colored but they are they are uh, they are part of the felsic group Okay, so that's about all the minerals here. One of the one of the major uh, major tools which allows us to differentiate between uh, minerals is uh, the the streak and our, our streak and color. So you saw the color yourself. Now let's look at the streak of some of these minerals. Uh, let's. So uh, let's look at some other properties of these uh, minerals. Now, one of the tools which allows us to distinguish between different minerals is uh, is a streak. Uh, that, together with the color, actually is a very powerful tool uh, which allows us to identify uh, different minerals. So let's look at how uh, we are going to get uh, different streaks. And the streaks, as I mentioned in the class, in the in the uh, in the indoor lesson earlier, uh, the uh, streak is not the same as color. So although you are you could get a mineral uh, which is dark in color, you are going you could for the same mineral you could you are may, you may actually get uh, white colored streak. So let's look at some of the streaks here. Okay. So let's uh, let's try uh, the pyroxene mineral. So let's uh, start with the pyroxene mineral. So this is the pyroxene mineral that we uh, the sample of pyroxene mineral that we have here, uh, which I showed you earlier. So this has got a dark color, as you can see very easily. And let's and this is the streak plate. Uh, this is the streak plate uh, used in a in a mineralogy lab. Uh, so what we are going to do, we are just going to simply rub this particular mineral on top of the streak plate, and we are going to observe the color of the uh, of of what we are going to get on the streak plate. And you can see very easily that the color of the uh, color of what we get on the streak plate is uh, basically it has got no color uh, so pyroxene has got uh, black color but colorless streak but let's uh, let's try to get the streak of the 
uh, orthoclase uh, feldspar. So this is this is a this is the sample of orthoclase uh, feldspar, which we saw earlier. Uh, this one here, it has got a flesh color. Uh, now, if we actually rub it, we get actually white streak. So the previous one, pyroxene, we white had a colorless streak. We had a colorless streak. But this powder, actually this is the powder that we, that we got uh, when we rubbed the, uh, the uh, sample of uh, uh, feldspar, but the streak that we get here is of white color, okay. So that is, uh, that is uh, the streak for, uh, for uh, the orthoclase uh, feldspar. Uh, the plagioclase, uh, plagioclase feldspar also if we try if we uh, try rubbing if you recall from the from the uh, table that we presented earlier if we rub it rub the sample on streak plate we are again going to get white colored streak uh, okay uh, this this is about it about streak we can try we can try quartz let us look at this sample of uh, this sample of uh, dark quartz let us look at the sample of dark quartz as well as the the uh, colorless quartz both of them we are going to look at uh, let us see what streak we get out of the dark one darker one so let us rub it and here what we get like what we got earlier we get white colored streak even when the sample is of dark color right now in this particular case uh, of uh, colorless uh, colorless uh, quartz again we are going to get uh, you just look at it we are going to get the same color streak okay so that's uh, that's the demonstration on streak how you uh, determine streak now let's get to the uh, get to the next get to the next uh, property that was uh, listed in the two tables that i gave you earlier and that is hardness so if you recall uh, from what I said in the lesson, hardness is basically uh, whether you can, you can actually scratch one particular mineral with another mineral or not. If you can scratch a mineral with a second mineral, the second mineral is harder than the first mineral. And in this process, actually there is a hardness scale uh, that developed, that evolved over, over uh, in, uh, in the study of uh, mineralogy and we call that particular scale as Mohs scale of hardness. Now we are going to look at the minerals that we uh, discussed here and uh, let us let's look at for instance uh, the list of hardnesses that we are that we gave that we listed in the table there and you can see that the hardness here ranges over uh, quite a bit of uh, it has got a very large range really so muscovite has got a hardness of 2 to 2.5 whereas quartz has got a hardness of 7 uh, and there are some intermediate values of hardness like uh, amphibole has got a hardness of 5 to 6 pyroxene also has got a hardness of 5 to 6 now let's let's uh, let's try to see what we mean by uh, this. So this is the pyroxene sample that we uh, that we were sh that we were showing that we were seeing earlier. So this is the pyroxene sample, and I will try to scratch uh, the pyroxene sample with the sample of quartz. Okay, quartz has got a hardness of uh, seven, whereas uh, pyroxene 
has got a hardness of 5 to 6. Now let us try to uh, focus on uh, that uh, shiny surface there and uh, I am going to put a scratch mark, try to put a scratch mark on that particular shiny surface with quartz and hopefully we are going to get a scratch mark uh, we, when we try to do that. And you can see, you can see now the scratch mark. So this is, this is the scratch mark that we got from uh, trying to scratch trying to scratch the pyroxene sample with quartz and since we could put a scratch mark on the uh, pyroxene sample using quartz and quartz has got a hardness of 7 so we know that pyroxene has got a hardness of less than 7. Okay, now let us uh, try another thing. Uh, plagioclase has got a hardness of 6. Uh, so, let us uh, and uh, let us see what else we can do here. Uh, Muscovite actually has got a hardness of 2.5 to 3. So, we should be able to put a scratch mark on Muscovite with the sample of pyroxene that we scratched with the quartz specimen. Okay, so let us uh, look at that. So we are going to focus on the shiny surface there and what we are going to do is difficult but we are going to try to scratch, put a scratch mark on this particular shiny surface using, uh, using the pyroxene uh, sample. And you can see that this is the scratch mark. You can see, you see that this is the scratch mark that we uh, that we put on the sample of mica using uh, pyroxene using the pyroxene sample. So this particular one here has got a hardness of less than five. That we can say. Uh, this is actually muscovite mica sample of uh, muscovite. Okay, so what else we can try here? Uh, uh, we have already discussed about about uh, cleavage. I talked about one sets of cleavage and two sets of cleavage. So this one, uh, let's let's look at uh, let's look at what I mean. So this one here. This is the pyroxene sample once again. So this is an example of perfect cleavage. Okay, this is an example of perfect cleavage. This one. Now, uh, quartz, on the other hand, it has it. This this one has got. Uh, this this is uh, this is not these are not uh, cleavage plane actually this is uh, this is an example of of uh, there is no cleavage actually in this one in 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 case of quartz basically uh, what else amphibol sample in case of amphibol sample also we have got perfect cleavage you can home on to these uh, dark colored uh, uh, pieces minerals so this is also another example of perfect cleavage okay the, the, all these things biotite uh, amphibole uh, amphibole as well as pyroxene has got uh, basically uh, two sets of cleavage but biotite mica biotite mica and uh, muscovite mica has got one set of cleavage because of the fact that these things are flaky in nature so i can actually get the flakes out you can try to uh, try to uh, focus on that and see the flaky nature 
of these minerals. You can see that I can easily uh, get the flakes out uh, from these minerals. All right, and the same will be the case in case of uh, in case of muscovite mica as well. Uh, and in fact, some of the flakes are coming out or coming out uh, from this thing and coming into my hand. Let me see whether I can get some flakes out of this one. So cleavage actually has got, okay, so that is, those are the flakes that are coming out. So you can see that they are really uh, very thin sheets uh, uh, that composes the rock mass. Okay. Uh Okay, now we are going to look at a few uh, samples of uh, common type of common rock types. Uh, let's begin with uh, sedimentary rocks. Uh, we are going to look at uh, uh, a few samples of sandstone, uh, shale and limestone. Uh, we also, I also included a sample of conglomerate here uh, because uh, that you, you will see the variety of different types of uh, uh, class or different types of uh, different different types of uh, constituents that are present in a mass of conglomerate because that might be also of interest. Okay, so what we have here, uh, these are actually the sample the cases. What you should really look at is the the uh, indication of sedimentation really. For example, uh, this one here, this one, the big piece here is a sample of uh, limestone and if you look at it, this is a very heavy one really, if you look at it, you can see the layers in which the calcite was, calcite mineral was deposited uh, in forming uh, the rock mass, okay. So the layer type of structure, layered structure really, is a hallmark of uh, essentially all different types of sedimentary rocks. Okay, so this is actually a piece of limestone. You can see that it is extremely difficult really to distinguish individual grains of this particular type of uh, rock. So it is a fine grained rock. Now here there are a few pieces of sandstone and sandstone can really vary a lot in terms of the uh, grain size that composes the uh, rock mass and color also could vary quite a bit. For example, this one is, a, uh, is an yellow colored sandstone and you try to look at the grains of this particular uh, rock mass and it is really uh, visible uh, to naked eye and it, it has got a very rough feeling when you run your finger on top of the rock mass here. And some of these, uh, uh, this one, on, on the other hand, this one, this piece here is uh, pink in color and you can see the deposition, this, the uh, signatures of deposition, depositional environment here. Uh, on those lines there and this particular, piece, this particular piece came out of a single bedding of sandstone so you do not really see those distinct layering that we saw earlier in case of the limestone sample. Now this pink sample here is much smoother to feel, smoother in feel in comparison with this yellow uh, uh, sandstone uh, piece. Now you have got another gray piece of sandstone here. This one is even coarser uh, in feel in comparison with the uh, piece of yellow sandstone. And this one is quite friable actually. So if I, if I rub the surface 
of this particular sample, then pieces of sand is going to come out of the mass of the sandstone. You can see that I just rubbed my finger on the sandstone and this is what I got on my hand. And actually sandstone could be quite friable and it will be very difficult to distinguish uh, if, if the sandstone is friable and weathered from uh, a mass of sand, uh, from, a, from a mass of uh, dense sand, it will be very difficult to uh, distinguish. Although there will be, there could be uh, some cementation, but in case of friable sandstones, the uh, signature of cementation actually, the effect of cementation could be uh, quite less. Uh, the third sample that we are going to look at, uh, at uh, uh, third sample that we have here is uh, a sample of shale and this is again once again what you see here is that layered structure and this is another one really. Uh, you can see the, the, uh, the signatures of the depositional environment as well as uh, uh, as well as the uh, the the uh, which is which is evident from the layering uh, layered structure that you have here. Now another thing that I want to point out here is that if you recall what we discussed in uh, in our classroom lesson uh, earlier on this topic, uh, clays actually clay minerals they when they lithify or Rock for, rocks rocks uh, form out of clay minerals, then uh, you get uh, you get what is called claystone or shale. So this is an example of claystone or shale. So here uh, these things are extremely fine in uh, in in granularity. So individual grains will be impossible to detect by naked eye you can uh, if you focus on the on a small uh, portion of the uh, surface of this uh, rock mass then you can convince yourself that it is extremely difficult actually to distinguish individual grains of these uh, this rock and that is quite in contrast with what we saw earlier in case of the sandstone so this is another uh, uh, piece of rock of fine grained uh, uh, composed basically of, uh, of fine grained particles. Finally, uh, let us look at in this group what we have got, we have got a piece of, uh, uh, we have got a couple of pieces of conglomerates and uh, uh, these are essentially uh, re results of cementation of individual pre-existing uh, pieces of rock and you can see that is very clearly visible here. So for example, that was a pre-existing rock fragment which got cemented by uh, cementitious material and this uh, cementitious material could be, could be uh, calcareous cement or, uh, or any other type of cement, uh, silica cement or any other type of cement. And then uh, what forms in the process is a, uh, is a piece of rock, is a, is a mass of rock and that is called conglomerate. So it is, it is an extremely variable uh, uh, type of rock in terms of uh, grain sizes of the constituents. This is one example and that is another example of a conglomerate. So let us now move on to the second class uh, of rocks. We are going to start with, uh, we started with uh, sedimentary rocks and now we are going to move on to uh, igneous rocks. Uh, although uh, I think, I think we should have really uh, started with the igneous rock but the way these are, these are placed on the table so it, it, it was convenient for me to start with the uh, sedimentary rock. So now let us move on to the igneous rock and finally we are going to come to the metamorphic rocks. Okay, now we are into, uh, into uh, uh, igneous rocks. Uh, so their origin is basically volcanism or uh, actually cooling of magma really. So a few common types of uh, 
types of uh, igneous rocks are listed here and uh, in addition to these rocks uh, we have got an example of uh, volcanic glass as well uh, obsidian uh, in this particular group. So we just uh, look at the uh, basic characteristics of uh, these types of rocks and then we are going to uh, take a few samples uh, in order to illustrate all these things. Okay. So let us begin with granite and what you have got really this is actually a, uh, a structure the structure of granite is called a uh, graphic structure and this is really uh, an interlocking interlocked arrangement of individual grains individual crystals and you can see for instance there is a uh, there is a crystal uh, crystal of uh, there are crystals of feldspar uh, light colored and uh, uh, fleshy colored really there are uh, uh, pink pinkish uh, crystals of feldspar and some dark colored minerals in between and these crystals really are quite large and you can see the individual grains in case of uh, granite. So granite is basically an example of coarse grained uh, volcanic rock and I explain as I explained in the class in earlier uh, in one of the earlier lessons is that because of the fact that granite cools at a much slower rate the crystals uh, have got a uh, chance of growing to much larger size as opposed to a piece of uh, piece of basalt uh, the one that I am holding uh, in my left uh, hand the dark colored specimen and you can see that in this particular case the cooling rate was much faster and as a result individual grains the crystal growth is much more muted and the crystals the individual grains are much finer and the other extreme the extreme the at the other extreme of this thing this is an intermediate case really so this is at one extreme you could say at the extreme uh, rapid rate of cooling what you get is a thing like this 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 is a sample of volcanic uh, glass okay so this is actually after the uh, volcanic eruption the uh, the, uh, the the rock forming minerals they cool at a, at such a fast pace that crystal growth is not, is not possible so what you get is instead of a crystalline structure you get a glass like mass uh, like the one that I'm holding here on my uh, left arm the the dark colored shiny piece uh, this is called this type of rock is called obsidian obsidian uh, which is by the way not included in the table that uh, we were showing just a little bit back okay so this is an example of obsidian all right so you, you can see you can you have seen the structure of uh, of a granite uh, this type of structure is also called uh, an augen type of structure in which you can augen means uh, eye basically so it looks it gives an appearance of an eye really uh, so there are there are different uh, bet between the dark color and the light color so uh, so this is an example of granite and then uh, this is another one it's basically a biotite granite and you can see uh, the uh, this is uh, this is quite a bit different actually in comparison with the previous example of granite that we were considering so uh, granite really is not a single type of rock uh, there could be a wide variety of granite in terms of uh, in terms of uh, coarseness of the of the mineral crystals as well as uh, in terms of its uh, chemical in, in mineral mineralogical uh, constituent the one that I am holding uh, in the front towards you actually towards the camera is an example of biotite granite this is a much lighter 
uh, in appearance in comparison with the previous one, which is a more common uh, variety of uh, granite, uh, pinkish uh, granite, pink granite. And you can see uh, the biotite uh, mineral uh, within, the, uh, within the rock mass. Uh, this one here that I'm pointing right now is a is a uh, is an is a uh, is essentially a biotite biotite mineral that we saw earlier. Okay, so this is these are the two these are two samples of granite. Uh, this is an example of diorite. So this one here is composed. The light colored uh, background is really. Uh, you, can, you can see that this is also, it has got two colors in it, uh, a light colored uh, background, or light, light colored mineral as well as a dark colored mineral. Typically, the light colored mineral is, the, uh, is, a fel is felspar and uh, the dark colored mineral in this case is hornblende. And this one here is, a, is, is much lighter uh, in comparison with the granite rock that we were considering earlier. And actually another thing that I want to point out here is that the graininess, I mean the individual grains or individual crystals in this particular case is much finer in comparison with the granite that we saw earlier. And in fact, the second sample of granite was much finer grained than the first sample of granite. So this one here is an example of sienite. Uh, again, we have got feldspar uh, with little or no quartz in this particular case. So this uh, pinkish, the, the light colored background is once again uh, feldspar. And there are some mafic minerals. Uh, you can see uh, there are quite a few mafic minerals in this particular rock mass as well. Uh, what else? We have got another piece here which is a pegmatite. So this one is a pegmatite. And here the structure is again uh, quite similar to what we saw earlier. And here again uh, we have got uh, interlocked, interlocked uh, uh, crystalline structure uh, in which all the individual crystals, they are, uh, they are really interlocked. And here again we have got quite a, quite a bit of, uh, of uh, uh, biotite mica as are evident uh, on within the rock here. Okay, so these are basically uh, biotite uh, pieces of biotite mica. Let me see whether I, yeah, the, the, you can see if you, if you look at it, you can see that the flake, I could, I could easily deflake this particular, I mean, and this is the piece here. Okay, so this big metal. And now let's, we are going to move on to uh, metamorphic rocks. Okay, now finally we are uh, into the group, uh, into the metamorphic uh, group of rocks. And uh, again, we are going to, uh, these are, these are, uh, this table here has got a, um, a list of few common types of uh, metamorphic rocks. And we are going to look at uh, some of them. Okay, now metamorphic rocks, as we have seen from our earlier lesson, uh, they could form from metamorphism because of uh, pressure increase or because of uh, because of uh, uh, temperature uh, driven processes from both uh, both. Uh, igneous rocks as well as uh, sedimentary rocks, and we are going to look at some of those uh, some of those rocks. For instance, uh, we saw earlier we I pointed out earlier that marble is a kind of metamorphic rock that forms uh, out of uh, metamorphism of limestone. Similarly, we also saw that uh, gneiss is another type of metamorphic rock that forms out of uh, metamorphism of uh, of uh, granite, we are going to look at that in the next little bit. Okay, so these are uh, basically some of the metamorphic rocks. Uh, now, this one here, 
is an example of nice which is listed on the table that we were showing a little bit uh, ago, uh, just just a little bit little while ago and you can see that you can see the layered appearance known as nisic structure really this is actually goes by the name nisic structure from this particular sample and in fact nice is a type of rock that forms out of the metamorphism of granite so basically this was the starting point really this was the starting point and you can see that all the individual grains and grains and crystals they are haphazardly uh, aligned now when this type of rock is subjected to a huge amount of pressure then minerals tend to uh, get aligned in a particular direction depending on the direction of pressure and what you get is a nisic appearance as is evident from this particular sample here okay you can see the haphazard arrangement of grains and you can see the ordered appearance that is there on my on the sample on my left hand the sample of nice and that is because of the uh, of the of the of the in intense pressure that the original rock mass was subjected to right so this is nice okay and another uh, type of uh, very similar character another type of rock of very similar characteristic is uh, granulite and uh, that is this one here and uh, so 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 this one the, the i mean constitutionally uh, granulite is very similar to nice but it has got uh, it has got uh, it has got quite a bit of mafic mineral in it and in fact the mafic minerals that are ab abundant in this one among those uh, is uh, the pyroxene mineral otherwise this particular thing this particular sample is quite similar in uh, structurally speaking this is quite similar to the sample of nice that we uh, considered earlier uh, uh, another difference actually slight difference actually this one is slightly uh, coarse grained you can see the granularity of this one it is slightly coarser grained in comparison with the nice sample sample of nice that we were looking at earlier all right then uh, that is a type of metamorphism we looked at and now let's look at another uh, metamorphic rock and this is slate this one here is slate and slate the starting point of slate uh, you can see the flaky nature of the sample okay thin sheet like appearance of this sample and they can uh, very relatively easily the individual sheets uh, can be separated although it is going to be a little bit more difficult than uh, deflaking uh, the micas is a little bit more difficult but still the flakes can be easily relatively easily they can be separated so this is uh, if you recall from what we discussed in the class uh, the uh, i mean slate is a type of rock that arises from metamorphism of shale okay so this is the type of rock that uh, was the beginning of this this uh, metamorphic rock so this is the beginning and finally what you get is this one here and this is also uh, more often than not this is also is because of metamorphism uh, because of pressure related metamorphism right so this is sample of uh, slate okay now another one this is a piece of marble uh, it's quite uh, this uh, 
this uh, this slightly granular in nature you can uh, you can try to you can you can try to focus on it and it is going to tell you that the uh, the structure of this one is granular uh, in which you can actually see some of the individual grains of calcite and I will uh, if you recall from what we discussed earlier is that marble forms because of metamorphism of limestone so what we began with is this piece here the metamorphism of this particular one which I am holding on my left hand this is the starting point of this uh, of formation of marble so this is the beginning and the end product of the metamorphism the process of metamorphism is this one and marble is much more compact generally in comparison with limestone all right another one here is uh, is quartzite so this is actually uh, this is an example of quartzite and the primary constituent of quartzite is quartz and quartzite forms from the uh, from basically quartzite forms from metamorphism of sandstone so what you have here is uh, this is this was a piece of sandstone pink sandstone that we looked at earlier so this was the starting point and this is the end product of the process of metamorphism okay so so what do you this this kind of need because we actually could uh, compare different types of rocks uh, metamorphic rocks and we could see that they are related very closely to a parent rock mass which underwent a certain a, a certain type of uh, physical uh, process uh, that gave rise to some change in structure which led to a totally different type of rock uh, the class of rock called metamorphic rocks and we saw a certain t a number of samples of metamorphic rock okay so uh, with that said, actually we are towards the end of uh, the uh, uh, demonstration in which uh, we looked at a few uh, samples of rock and uh, a, a few samples of uh, common rock forming minerals. Uh, we looked at some of the characteristics, easily uh, determinable uh, characteristics of uh, the minerals uh, which, allowed, which allows us to roughly identify uh, some of these minerals and distinguish them from other minerals okay so with that uh, we are going to wrap up this demonstration okay then uh, we are at the uh, final uh, little bit of uh, this particular uh, course uh, in order to wrap up uh, I'm just uh, going to uh, going to uh, list uh, some of the mistakes uh, that crept in to our presentations uh, which you have already looked at unfortunately uh, so that you could correct your notes accordingly and I'm going to have a list of acknowledgments and uh, I'm going to wrap things up uh, with a list of references which you could uh, read at your leisure and you will uh, find the information in those uh, list of references uh, in those references uh, useful uh, for uh, improving your understanding about the subject okay uh, the, you should uh, note these uh, errors uh, that crept in we noticed these errors as a part of the review process uh, in lesson 3.3 .3, chemical composition of quartz was indicated as SiO4 it should actually be SiO2 then uh, in lesson 10.4 uh, we indicated I indicated that the rock creep is generally slow but you should note that the creep the uh, the speed of rock creep depends on the 
uh, on the stage really as to how mature is the process is so if the if the rock creep process is at the tertiary stage then the speed could in fact be quite high so you should correct your uh, notes from lesson 10.4 to uh, to consider this point then lesson 10.5 uh, by mistake, we indicated that Raipur is a part of Madhya Pradesh, but in fact, it is a part of the uh, newly formed, relatively newly formed uh, Chhattisgarh state. Uh, and finally, uh, there were a number of uh, editorial and grammatical errors for which uh, I, and those errors I didn't, I didn't list here, but I must apologize. Uh, for those errors in the notes and I think you, sh you would be able to notice those errors and correct your notes uh, because they are quite obvious although they didn't uh, uh, to my understanding affect the technical content of this particular course. Alright now uh, to the list of acknowledgements this course was uh, this courseware was prepared in the NPTEL project uh, of funded by the MHRD uh, for which I am grateful. Then uh, external reviewer actually made a very thorough review of this uh, of the contents of the technical contents of this course and in fact the uh, the errors or the mistakes that I listed earlier were uh, uh, largely came 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 out uh, during the review process itself, and I'm uh, grateful to the external reviewer for for the uh, uh, for the re for the thorough review. Thirdly, the staff of the Center for Educational Technology, IIT Kharagpur, helped me out with the preparation of this course. Uh, they uh, provided an excellent uh, uh, backdrop, uh, which uh, which which made possible this entire development. Uh, I am grateful for for their help, and they also, in fact, uh, did uh, comment about the review and the visual uh, appearance of this particular course. Uh, that is also uh, very useful in uh, qualitative improvement of this particular courseware. Uh, laboratory staff of the departments of civil mining. Uh, civil and mining engineering and uh, the department of geology and geophysics of IIT Kharagpur provided help with the laboratory and demonstration work uh, which formed uh, the majority of the last three uh, lessons of this particular course particularly professor Saibal Gupta of department of geology geophysics uh, he, uh, he was instrumental in developing the lab program of the uh, concerning the mineralogical uh, mineralogical and uh, petrological assessment of rock and rock and mineral samples uh, i am grateful for his help uh, i am also grateful to my students who helped me with uh, various parts of the courseware development, uh, particularly Raghavendra Singh, Amit Gupta, Devadita Datta, Pavan Kumar, Sanjeev Kumar, and Lankesh uh, Laguri. Uh, and finally, we are uh, we. I need to list some of the general references that might be useful in order to enhance your knowledge regarding engineering geology. Uh, needless to say that the course that I tried to prepare here was by no means complete so it has to be the knowledge uh, provided here needs to be supplemented uh, from uh, from reading other papers or textbooks some of the general textbooks are listed here uh, the first one Principles of Engineering Geology, this particular textbook, I found uh, it, uh, that it contained uh, useful information regarding geohazard, uh, index testing of soil and rock, uh, subsurface investigation of uh, soil and rock sites, uh, 
Uh, it has also got very useful information on remote sensing applications in engineering geology. Uh, the second reference, uh, a textbook of geology. This particular one has uh, very good information uh, on pet on uh, on mineralogical uh, or regarding mineralogy and petrology of uh, rock and mineral samples. Uh, it also has got very useful information regarding uh, regarding geologic map. Uh, preparation and uh, section preparation and all those stuff which we discussed in the last little bit of this particular course and thirdly uh, uh, the book by Prabin Singh engineering and general geology uh, this also could be a very useful reference it has got a wealth of information regarding structural uh, geology uh, regarding faults and folds and other features that we discussed in the early part of this course. It has also got uh, information regarding, regarding uh, mineralogy, crystallography, uh, all those details also we discussed in the early part of this course. Uh, and you need to discuss the topics uh, with your teachers as the time comes because the information that is provided here has to be supplemented as I mentioned earlier with other sources because the because no courseware can be uh, a self-contained uh, repository of all knowledges that there could be on the topics covered I just wanted to provide you with the glimpse of the subjects that are generally of that are of general interest uh, in engineering geology and if you need to interact with me, by all means, you should try to contact me through IIT Kharagpur and provide me your provide me uh, your comments or questions. And uh, during the interaction, I would also be glad to provide you with my inputs on your thoughts or your problems. Thank you very much.